A good-looking kid with the improbable name of Tab Hunter rocketed to Hollywood stardom in the early 50s. He was often on a horse, frequently without a shirt. You don't know how rough it gets. And he'd soon cornered the market on hysterical teenage girls. In 1956, you received 62,000 Valentines. <laughs> That's just... I got so much mail that... Um, I may have written one of those, you realize Oh, that. <laughs> thank you. You never know. <laughs> Today, Tab Hunter is a fit 74 and seems both proud of and slightly mortified by his movie star past. When you're a big movie star and all that hoopla is being thrown on you, I wasn't really uh, comfortable. When he tells you he'd have been just as happy training horses, you actually believe him. You used to use some of your own horses in movies, right? Oh, yeah. I used my mare swizzle stick. Yeah, I used her in a couple, three Western, I used three films. I used her in The Came to Cordura with Gary Cooper and Rita Hayworth and Van Heflin. Swizzle stick was good in front of the camera? She was great in front of the camera. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Will you kiss me? <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> but he's still as gracious to fans as ever and those one-time hysterical teenagers are flocking to his book signings. The autobiography, just out, describes a shy boy, abandoned by his father, raised by a domineering mother. His real name was Art Galeen. An agent simply made up Tab Hunter, saying, well, he needed to tab him something. Do you remember when you, you sort of, in your mind, ceased being Art Galeen and became Tab Hunter? Probably when I got a check that said page of the order of Tab Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, whoa, $250. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll tell you who's gonna have her. <laughs> Those first big bucks came for a pot boiler called Island of Desire in 1952. Veteran actress Linda Darnell, he writes, had to teach him how to kiss on screen. I just remember after kissing, she said, relax, I'm good luck for newcomers. That's the thing she told me. And then after I kissed her, she pinched me and she said, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely mastered that part of acting. And soon, Art Galeen, a.k.a. Tab Hunter, had a seven-year contract with Warner Brothers. But once I was under contract to Warner Brothers, they had a whole publicity wing that was devoted to selling that product. You. To the public, exactly. He says he was sold like spam, but he admits he cheerfully went along with all the hype. I was embarrassed, but by the same token, I was loving it because it's a, I mean, my gosh, I mean, who at 20 years of age starring in a motion picture? I mean, it's also overwhelming. You know, you can't say no. And if, they, if you know, if they say lie down in the middle of the road, the truck rolls over you, you say, whereabouts would you like me to position myself? <laughs> you know, you just do anything because. That was your job. Warner Brothers promoted his teen sex symbol image relentlessly, encouraging dates with starlets, from Debbie Reynolds to Natalie Wood. The movie magazines had a field day with Tab Hunter's alleged love life. But even in uptight Hollywood of the 50s, there were whispers. And in 1955, Confidential Magazine broke a story implying that heartthrob Tab Hunter was gay. Well, he says today, they were right. I was living a lie, absolutely. I was another person. I mean, my sexuality was my sexuality and it was not what people, you know, perceived. You know, people believe what they want to believe. But uh, it was very difficult for me. And this was not the time to be gay in Hollywood. Right? But you don't talk, about, I never talked about those things. You know, I had a mother that always said, you know, Nothing for show, everything is quiet, you don't say these things. He jokes that on double dates with Tony Perkins, he was less interested in his date than in Perkins, with whom he had a two-year relationship. And there were others, figure skater Ronnie Robertson, ballet star Rudolf Nureyev. Tab Hunter was, he writes, one very confused young actor. And then you go on and say, I never acted straight to get by. I wasn't getting away with something. I behaved the same way all the time. With me, what you saw is what you got. What you see is what you get. Exactly. And what you don't see is none of your business. Exactly. Exactly. So, so why now? Why 
why go public with all this now? Well, I heard that someone was going to be doing a book on me. So I thought, look, get it from the horse's mouth, not from some horse's ass after I'm dead and gone. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why I wrote it. In any case, so powerful was Warner Brothers PR that his career flourished despite the rumors, in movie after movie. Andy, stop. Let's just look at the ocean. I've seen the ocean before. And in 1956, he stepped into a recording booth for the very first time. They say for every boy and girl, there's just one love in this whole world. And I know I found mine. This is Your my turn. dream. <laughs> Young Love knocked Elvis off the top of the charts and won Tab Hunter a spot on Perry Como's TV show. I'm scared to death because I've never sung live before. Are you, do you remember what you were thinking at the time? I have no idea what I was thinking. <laughs> Make it Get stop. me through this, <laughs> probably. <laughs> you look a little relieved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In 1958, there was the hit musical Damn Yankees with Gwen Verdon as the sex pot Lola. Would you like to take Lola someplace tonight? Gee, I, I sure would like to, but uh, you know what Mr. Van Buren would say? He'd say you lucky boy. No, no. But nothing lasts forever, and he left Warner Brothers in 1959. A few solid hits followed. He doesn't look old enough to drink. I'm old enough to do anything. But things never were quite the same again. You don't have that machine behind you. And, you know, today's headlines, tomorrow's fish wrap. The Tab Hunter Show. There was a failed TV show, one surfer movie shot mostly in the studio, some uproarious grade B movies. Can't we go any faster? I'm doing my best. And years of dinner theater. Steady work, good money, but low profile until 1981. It's Todd, honey. Todd? Todd tomorrow. I remember when he said yes, I went berserk. I was like calling every person in the world. I was like running, I, like I won the lottery. I was running up and down the street. I couldn't believe that Tab Hunter was gonna come to Baltimore and be in our movie. And Divine was over the moon. Offbeat director John Waters sought Hunter out to star with transvestite actor Divine in his cult classic, Polyester. Never, ever did I want to make fun of Tab Hunter's career. I wanted Tab to make fun of it with me, the idea of this image, which he seemed happy to be. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing is it sort of introduced me to a whole audience that didn't know what a Tab Hunter was or who a Tab Hunter was. Mm -hmm. How many covers did you find when you were looking around? Over 150. Whatever a Tab Hunter was, what he wasn't was sentimental as his longtime partner, Alan Glasser, discovered when helping him research the book. Tab never kept any of these things. He didn't have a movie magazine on himself. He kept no memorabilia. He just wasn't interested in reading about himself. Why didn't you want to keep it? I just, you know, okay, done that. Let's go on to the next thing. What a wonderful wedding there will be. Those heady days are long gone. Today, he and Glasser own a production company and share a comfortable life together in California with dogs Katie and Olivia. She's a ham. And if Tab Hunter still seems somehow like a movie star, well, he's as amazed by that now as he was way back then.